Hello everyone, welcome to English Academy. Today we will study this poem for students of class 10, A Tiger in the Zoo, written by Leslie Norris. This is the third poem taken from the first flight book. Now here the poet talks about a tiger who is confined in the cage in a zoo. The tiger is not free to roam around in its natural habitat that is a jungle. And the poet wants to highlight the situation of this ferocious animal. Once this animal has been put in a cage, it has been bound, it is not free to roam around, it is no longer its original self. Now it is not that ferocious as it is in the jungle. So let us read this poem and we will see the difficult word meanings, the poetic devices and we will explain the poem also. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage. Stalks means follows but here it means walks because he is not following anyone. The tiger is alone so he is just walking. Vivid means having deep bright colors. So here the vivid stripes refers to the bright colors of the tiger's skin that is yellow and black. Pads here refers to the paws of the tiger. These paws. And then rage means violent uncontrollable anger. So here first of all he refers to the tiger who is confined in the cage. So the poet says that the tiger walks with his bright skin, the design on its skin. And then he says that he can only take a few steps in the cage because the cage is quite small. And the tiger walks on his pads of velvet quiet, means the paws of the tiger are made of a fur which is like velvet fabric, which is very soft and the tiger does not make any sound when it walks. In his quiet rage, now quiet means absolutely quiet, no sound and rage is violent uncontrollable anger and that will produce some sound means the roaring of the tiger when he is in rage, when he is angry. So the poet says in his quiet rage, now otherwise he is saying that a tiger is very violent, he is full of rage but now in the cage when he is confined, he is quiet. So he does not make any sound. So very interesting stanza, the poet says that the tiger is closed in a cage which is very small. So he keeps on walking and his skin is brightly colored in yellow and black and the paws of the tiger are noiseless and the tiger also does not make any sound. It is very quiet when it is walking inside this cage. Then in the next stanza, the poet says, he should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass. Lurking means remaining hidden so as to wait in ambush, means he is hiding, waiting for his prey. So he says, now in this stanza, he is talking of the natural habitat of the tiger and he says that, on the other hand, the tiger should be in a jungle. He should be hiding behind tall grass waiting for a big fat deer to pass the place so that he can pounce upon the deer, attack it and make its prey and eat it. So that is the natural act, the natural activity of the tiger. Then further he says, he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, barring his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. Snarls means make an angry warning sound. Barring means exposing, that is showing and fangs are the large sharp teeth of uh, any animal like tiger or wolf which are canine, which are very sharp. Here you can see this tooth at the corner which is very sharp, this is a canine. So when he shows this teeth. So, he's, so now in this stanza also he is talking of the natural behavior of the tiger. He says that tiger should be roaming around houses, snarling, making that angry sound of roaring when he is roaming around the houses which are located at the edge of the jungle. So, tiger lives in the jungle and sometimes they wander into the villages next to the jungle also and they make those roaring sounds and they snarl at the houses when they roam around there. And he should be showing his white sharp teeth and his claws in order to 
scare the villagers so this is also the natural behavior of this tiger but now he's saying that this tiger is confined in the cage he is closed he is locked in this cell so he is absolutely quiet he is not making any noise he is not showing his fangs he is not trying to scare the people but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors concrete is a material which is very hard it is a mixture of broken stone gravel sand cement and water it can be spread or poured into molds and forms a mass resembling stone on hardening so concrete is a mixture it is liquid and then after some time it becomes a solid and it looks like a stone now here in this stanza again the poet is talking of the tiger who is locked in the cell in the zoo so he says that now this poor tiger is locked in this cell which is made of concrete and the tiger's strength is behind bars means the tiger who is otherwise very powerful very ferocious but now once it is locked in the cell his strength is also useless he cannot use his power so he keeps on walking inside the cage he walks from one edge from one corner to the other and he also ignores the visitors because he knows that he cannot show off his power he cannot terrorize the visitors and so he ignores them then in the next stanza the poet says he hears the last voice at night the patrolling of cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars patrolling means keeping watch over an area by regularly walking or traveling around it so these police cars patrol different areas where they are on duty in order to keep a vigil in order to take care of the surroundings so here also he is saying the poet is saying that this uh, tiger who is locked in the zoo he can hear the noises around him and at night what does he hear he hears the noise of the siren which the police car is making when it goes through the when it goes around the zoo and what the tiger does other than this the tiger looks up in the sky and his eyes are very brilliant they are shining and with those eyes he looks at the stars which are shining in the sky why is he looking at the stars because these stars are common either the tiger is in the jungle or the tiger is in the zoo he can see the stars in the night sky so that is something which is common for him that is why he is looking at the stars in the night sky now we see the poetic devices that have been used in this poem now first of all throughout the poem we get to see personification the tiger has been personified when the poet refers him as he he stalks and in other stanzas also we will see that he the tiger is referred to as he him his so the tiger has been personified he has been given human qualities and then <clears throat> we see the use of enjambment enjambment is a poetic device in which the same sentence continues towards the next line also and there is no punctuation mark in the end of the line and the poet wants to show an urgency that he wants to really wants to tell us something so here in this line enjambment has been used then the rhyme scheme of this entire poem is a b c b so the second and fourth line are rhyming cage and rage over here similarly you can see in other stanzas also then over here the poet has used a metaphor metaphor is an indirect comparison of the qualities of two things velvet pads or velvet quiet here the paws of the tiger have been compared to velvet fabric the poet wants to say that the paws of the tiger are very soft just like the velvet fabric which is very soft and here quite rage this is an oxymoron oxymoron is when poets use two words one is an adjective and the other one is a noun and the adjective is quite opposite to the noun here he says quiet rage quiet means without any sound 
absolutely quiet and rage is violent anger which will produce some sound so when the poet says in his quiet rage rage cannot be quiet so this kind of an adjective that has been used with rage is an oxymoron opposites now we move to the next answer here again we see personification the same rhyme scheme has been used then we also see enjambment over here and here we can see alliteration that is the repetition of a consonant sound in two or more closely placed words here per sound is repeating plump pass then in the next stanza also same rhyme scheme has been used edge and village are rhyming and then here we get to see enjambment again personification has been used then we move to the next stanza same rhyme scheme has been used a b c b bars and visitors are rhyming and then we see alliteration behind bars ber sound is repeating personification has been used here also then in the next stanza same rhyme scheme a b c b cars and stars are rhyming personification has been used we can see enjambment over here the poet has also used repetition brilliant word has been repeated brilliant eyes and brilliant stars because the poet wants to show a relationship between the tiger's eyes and the stars which are brilliantly shining in the sky because they both are familiar to each other once the tiger was in the forest at that time also he used to see the stars shining in the night sky and now when he is in the zoo when he is locked in the cell still he can see these brilliant stars in the night sky and with this we come to an end of this session we have read the poem a tiger in the zoo we have seen the difficult word meanings the poetic devices and i have also explained the poem to you if you have any doubts you can write in the comments if you want the lesson notes and the important question answers and mcqs we will add the links in the description box below this video thank you for watching this video if you liked it please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more such videos